What's good, math family? Back again with another Algebra 1 Rejinx exam review. We're going to focus on what you need to know and how to approach these problems to get to the correct answer. Let's get started. As we start this video out, family, please don't forget to check the description box for other helpful videos on the Regents exam. We have a full exam review and one where we focus on open-ended responses. Problem number one, we're dealing with a geometric sequence. And I would tell you guys, we're, we're multiplying. And if you kind of look at the answer choices and focus on the second, third, and fourth term in the sequence, we could eliminate A and C because the numbers are getting larger. When we multiply by a fraction, it'll get smaller. And when we use answer choice B and D, we'll notice that we have to multiply 2 times 4 to get 8 or 8 times 4 to get 32. So the correct answer is D. Now, another way that you could check this is using the geometric sequence formula, which is A sub N is equal to A sub 1 to the R times N minus 1 power. So let's say we're trying to find the second term in the sequence. So we're talking about number 2. And that is equal to the first term, 1 half. We don't know what the R is. And the term that we plugged in is the second term in the sequence. So that's how we get the 2 minus 1. When we simplify, we're going to have 2 is equal to 1 half times R to the first power. To get R by itself, we're just going to multiply by our denominator, get rid of our fraction. And we'll have 4 is equal to R. So these are two ways to figure out the common ratio for a geometric sequence. In the second example, we're dealing with inequalities. And after looking at the inequality symbol, greater than or equal to, we could eliminate answer choice A and C because this should be a closed circle. Now the first step to properly solve is subtract 6.4. So we have negative 4x is greater than or equal to negative 2.8 minus 6.4 which is negative 9.2. Now family, because we're dividing by a negative x, you have to flip your inequality sign. This is what they're betting on us to forget. So after we divide, we're gonna have x is now less than or equal to 2.3. So our answer choice is gonna be d, and like I said, use process of elimination, gonna help us to get the correct answer more than likely. So we're dealing with a word problem and we have to find the correct statement. So A says that the ball lands on the ground at four seconds. Well, when we look at four seconds, the height is 11. For it to be on the ground, the height would have to be zero. So this is incorrect. The ball reaches a maximum height of 11 feet. This is incorrect because the ball reaches a height of 59 and 75 feet. When we go to answer choice C, the ball was launched from a height of zero feet. Well, when time is zero seconds, meaning the ball has not been launched, the height was 11 feet. Again, for that statement to be true, the height would have to be zero. So after using process of elimination, correct answer choice is D. And when we read it to verify, it says the ball reaches its maximum height at two seconds. So at two seconds, we notice what? we have the highest value in terms of feet. So just please make sure you guys understand how to interpret the graph when you have a word problem like this. We're dealing with a box and whisker plot and they're asking us about the interquartile range. And this is, can be a very simple problem if you just remember key information. So you know box and whisker plots have the minimum, Q1, Q2, Q3, and the maximum value. So when we're talking about the interquartile range, we're talking about the difference between Q1 and Q3. Well, we know that Q3 is equal to 110 and Q1 is equal to 60. So once we subtract, we know that the interquartile range is going to be 50. So the correct answer choice is B. And before we go to the next problem, please be mindful of the other words that they may use, such as the median, upper quartile, and lower quartile. Sometimes they'll switch between those vocabulary and what you see on my screen. So please know which refers to which part of the box and whisker plot. For us to solve this inequality 
algebraically, first thing we want to do is distribute 5 to what's in the parentheses. So we'll have 5x minus 10 is less than or equal to 3x plus 20. Now we could just solve like a simple or regular inequality, I should say. So after we subtract 3x, this is what we'll have. Right? We know that we the variables and constants need to be on opposite sides of the inequality or equal sign. So we'll add 10 on both sides. 2x is less than or equal to 30. And once we divide, we know that x is less than or equal to 15. Now, before we go, let's just touch on the graph real quick. So if you we were graphing this, and you want to do the interval notation. Sorry about my line, guys. No, it's not the most the best line. But let's say we had something like this, right? We just created a quick number line. First off, closed circle because it's already equal to. And all those numbers that are less than or equal to 14, I mean 15, sorry, family, are going to be to the left towards zero. So this is how we would shade. If the axis for interval notation, the graph is coming from negative infinity. We use parentheses around it, and it's coming all the way up to 15, and we're going to have a bracket. So if they ask you to graph it and interval notation, this is what it should look like. Please make sure you know how to do all three of these things in case they ask you. We're dealing with another word problem, and what they want us to focus on is what does 3 represent in the function that they give us? And when we look at the quadratic equation, we have to understand that it's going to be opening down. So when we look at answer choice A, answer choice A is incorrect. For us to find the maximum height of the ball, we'd basically try to find the vertex. That would be the maximum height of the ball. So that is incorrect. When we go to answer choice B, it's the height from which the ball is thrown. Well, when you think about it, when T for seconds is zero, meaning you haven't thrown the ball yet, h of t, the answer which is represented in feet, will be 3. So this would be the correct answer, it would be b. But before we go, let's break down c and d. So c says the number of seconds it takes for the ball to reach the ground. Well, that will be represented by the x-axis and when the parabola crosses the x-axis. So we're specifically talking about this point right here that you see me making on my screen when the ball comes back down to the ground. So we know that this is not the correct answer. Then answer choice D, it says the number of seconds it takes for the ball to reach its maximum height. So that is related to the vertex. So when it reaches its maximum height, which is why the answer is just the X coordinate. So if the X coordinate was something like, let's say, 315 would say that it reached its maximum height of 15 feet at three seconds. So this is how you would kind of break down a function and find different answers based on this, the problem that they asked you, family. We're dealing with transformations of functions, and they want us to pick the correct response. So they give us the parent function f of x is equal to x squared, and they gave us g of x is equal to 2 times x minus 3 squared. So we're talking about transformations of parabolas. And if you remember my older videos, I always tell you guys that if the transformation is inside the parentheses, like what we have on this problem, it's going to be a shift to the left or the right. Now, specifically with this problem, x minus 3, we're going to have a shift to the right. So A and B, we could eliminate those answer choices. Now, a lot of times students struggle with understanding whether the parabola is going to open up and be more narrower or wider because of this A. But family, remember that the A just represents rise over run. And if you go to a, if you just create like a quick parabola and you plot a random vertex, right? Let's say we just did zero, zero. If I go up two over one, the graph is going to be a lot more narrow, right? Now, let's say if I did the same thing with red. Now, that means I go up one but over two, right? 
because the run is larger, that means the parabola is going to open up wider. So the correct answer choice would be answer choice D. And if you struggle with this, just always think about it as rise over run and make a quick sketch. This could really help you get to the right answer. And now we're on to the last problem of this video. We really hope this video has been helpful for you, math family. If it has, please don't forget to smash the like button for us and subscribe to our channel for more helpful content. We're dealing with geometric sequences, and all we know is the third and fifth term, and they want us to determine the ratio. So we can use that formula from earlier that we talked about in problem one. A sub n is equal to a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1 power. And when we simplify, we'll have a sub 5 is equal to a sub 3 times r to the n minus 1 power. So now when we actually substitute the values, this is what we're going to have. 625 is equal to 25 times r to the 5 minus 3 power. So we'll have 625 is equal to 25 times r squared. So to get r by itself, you guys already know we have to divide by 25. Once we simplify this fraction, what we're going to get is r squared is equal to 25. And you guys know to get rid of our exponent, we just take its root. So r is equal to the square root of 25, which is just 5. So our answer would be B. And if we want to determine if this is correct, all you have to do is plug this back in and check it. Really hope that this video was helpful for you, math family. If it was, don't forget to smash the like button for us, subscribe to the channel, and leave comments down below if you had questions on this video or if there's topics you'd like to see in our channel in the future. Thank you guys so much for continuing to watch and support Algebra 1 with Mr. Peters.